I just hate the whole club. <laughs> is that a bad thing to say? There is an extra bit of spice on it, and you know that there's that rivalry there. There's nothing better than being there with like you know your closest mates and seeing absolutely stuff your rivals. Palace up until 1973 were called the Glaziers, based on the people who worked at Crystal Palace, made a glass, um, that was the obvious nickname. Then in 1973, uh, we had a nickname changed to Eagles, changed the red and blue from claret and blue. Apparently a lot of fans were chanting from, from Crystal Palace were chanting Eagles, Eagles, and I think just to counteract that, I had the Brighton fans singing Seagulls, Seagulls. Brighton then changed their nickname to the Seagulls as a response to that chant and the, the Brighton fans embracing it which to me is quite amusing because your whole identity is based on us. It's hilarious that the, uh, the Palace fans think we call ourselves the Seagulls because of Eagles. I mean, Seagull shit on Eagles, that, that rhymes, that's kind of nice, but no, don't, don't, they're way up above their station if they think we give a fuck about what they're called and, and actually drives the wheel. We're Seagulls because that's, you know, you go down to Brighton and put your fucking ear all the time. Palace-Brighton rivalry is very, very well known, starting back in 1976 when, um, Terry Venables was the Palace manager and Adam Mullery was the Brighton manager and um, they didn't like each other from their time at Spurs. Um, Terry Venables felt that he should be the captain there where Adam Mullery actually was. Adam Mullery at the time was manager and there was a bit of a needle in uh, one of the games and I think he um, I think he gave a little bit of stick to the Palace fans and it's always stuck in their memories. I'm not sure if he got escorted off the pitch by the police as well or something like that. Palace won the tie at 1-0 and um, Alan Mullery charged onto the pitch, straight for the referee, sticking his two fingers up at the Palace fans in the crowd. Mullery having coffee thrown at him, uh, and then he decided to get some change out of his pocket and uh, throw it at a Crystal Palace supporter and say that's who the club's worth. Geographically, the closest clubs to us are Millwall and Charlton. Charlton we don't care about, no feelings towards them whatsoever. And then there's Millwall, uh, who we just, we both have a mutual agreement that we each other's second rivals. Uh, they, they hate West Ham, we hate Brighton, and then we all come in at a close second. As soon, soon as you sign for a club, you always really want to know who their local rivals are. Um, so yeah, I was made aware of it quite early. From my own experience, I knew about the, the rivalry before I could even name the first 11. Uh, so I knew there was something there. The first time we played them, and I'm you know, walking down the Holmesdale Road as a 19, 20 year old, getting coins and bottles thrown at me from over police barricades and stuff like that, you just, you learn very quickly that they hate us, we hate them, and there's no way you're going to be able to resolve anything around this. There's, there's no conversations to be had on match days. It was 13, 2002, uh, 13 years since we played them in the league, 11 years since we played them in the cup, and uh, I was sort of 20 at the time. And I turned up to Brighton Station, and uh, there's nothing but 35, 40 year old men there with, what can I say, quite a few scars on their faces already, and you could just tell this was a special rivalry. 2011-12 season, which was was the first time that um, we played them for a few years again when they got promoted. Come out of the stadium and at the top of the road, just sort of where that truck is, to prevent all the fans coming out here turning left, the police erected a 10-foot steel wall to keep the fans separated from each other. Um, the big mistake they made though is they pushed all the Palace fans down this way, sent us up there, that kept the Brighton fans behind. We all arrived at the station at the same time, so at the clock tower, it came to complete loggerhead. Brighton fans coming down one road, Palace fans coming down the other road. All went off massively. And um, yeah, that was the last we saw the 10-foot steel wall. I can't really put into words. I actually feel kind of like the old adrenaline's rushing now thinking about it. So I think, you know, going away uh, or playing any sort of teams, you get a little bit of, uh, little bit of adrenaline when you're playing either bigger clubs or, you know, there's, there's something on the line. But just with Palace, I think you know you could cut the atmosphere with a knife. I think even on the even on the pitch, you know the players they understand how much it means to us as fans. I always remember when we beat them at Sellers the one 0 uh, the celebrations after in front of our own fans of different class. You know all the players, all the manage, management and staff all over in the corner, all celebrating together, and it, it sort of gives you a real good boost to go into the next game. Undoubtedly, the 2013 playoff semi-final, and we went there, and Wilfred Zaha just done what Wilfred Zaha does and he absolutely tore him apart, scored two goals, we won the game 2-0 and the emotions that day, I'd, I'll never forget it. You can't get any better than that, beating your rivals in a semi-final at their own ground and then going on to get promoted no less. <laughs> Amazing day. If you actually go and do something stand out in a game, either yeah. putting in a really thumping tackle or scoring a goal, 
I think you, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're always in the memory of the, your own fans, so that sort of goes down in folklore, really. Paul McShane, I think, scored the goal with me, we hit 1 0. he go down in history at, at Brighton as scoring the winning goal against Palace. So now to get back into the Premier League with them, you know, where they are, uh, and I generally do think I want them to stay up. Because if they go down, I don't want to follow them down, but I, I really do want to, you know, continue this rivalry and playing against them. But it's certainly the one to look out for. Um, it's the one where you know you book the day off, the work the day before, definitely the day after. Uh, I mean, the, the coppers and the, the authorities are quite clever. You know, they they book it on a Tuesday night or they'll do like an early kickoff, but um, it doesn't stop you looking out for it. You know, you plan your year around it. That's for sure.